Thank you, Pro Program Director. Uh, Deputy Director OIE, Dr. Monique Ellett, CEO of GalvMed, Dr. Peter Jeffries, Director Animal Health, Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, Dr. Modesani, Chairperson of AFTA, Mr. Benson Ameda, colleagues and guests, it's indeed a privilege and an honor to be part of this gathering. May I firstly acknowledge and express my sincere gratitude towards the OIE for the generous financial contribution in making this event possible. I can assure you that without your involvement, this would not have been possible. I also would like to thank the management of GalvMed for their financial contribution, which finally made it possible to host this first ever African Para-Veterinary Conference. My gratitude to all other people and organizations for your contributions as well. Colleagues and honorable guests, we must not forget why we are gathered here today and for the next two days. The valuable contributions and inputs of veterinary paraprofessionals in South Africa, Africa and globally has been neglected or in some instances brutally ignored for too many years. The global animal health status would not have been possible without the almost daily contribution of veterinary paraprofessionals at different levels of prevention, control and eradication of animal diseases. I say this without criticizing or being negative regarding the role veterinarians played, but I say this to emphasize that the time has come to acknowledge the contribution of veterinary paraprofessionals which they played in the past and the role they will be playing in the future. Disease surveillance control and eradication will not be possible without the involvement of the different veterinary paraprofessional groups. This is a reality which we cannot ignore. A gathering of African veterinary paraprofessionals has been long overdue, and for that reason we need to use the time to our utmost best in reaching our common goal. What is this goal? To ensure that the veterinary paraprofessionals are acknowledged and treated as such as an integral part of the veterinary team in the decision-making processes as well as the execution thereof. To also be able to become part of the executive management of Vetni team and not merely being seen as the stock inspector on the ground. Vetni paraprofessionals and more specific, the training of Vetni paraprofessionals has grown over the years with vibrant young people making this their career of choice, only to become very disappointed and sometimes negative because of no career pathing and opportunities to express themselves. I work with them at university level on a daily basis. Numerous veterinary paraprofessionals with masters and doctor degrees will be left out in the cold and in most instances they must look for other opportunities outside of veterinary services to full, fulfill their dreams. Veterinary paraprofessionals are registered and regulated by the veterinary statutory bodies with annual maintenance fees linked to that but without the choice of generating a much needed income. This is still the most important concerns of veterinary paraprofessionals globally. Why obtain a qualification, register with your statutory body, but you will not be allowed to generate your income and cater for your family? Is that not the basic need of life? Is this acceptable or do we merely want to protect other members of this team? I really hope that we will be able to answer this question rather sooner than later. South Africa, and more specific, our rural communities, has a need for a basic veterinary service which can be rendered by animal health technicians at a very basic price. I'm referring to basic vaccinations, castrations, dewornings, and treatment of tick-borne diseases. Why not allow them to deliver the service if they are registered with a statutory body and as such under control of that body? I can assure you that it's cheaper to train these people in three years' time and employ them in these situations. Although we are very grateful for the role the OAS has played in the past, it is time to recognize the existence of ethnic paraprofessionals and give them the opportunity to express themselves. Within the different African countries, different levels of training with different names for animal health officials do exist. We look at veterinary paraprofessionals as technicians, technologists, officials, and sometimes even scientists. Colleagues, 
I think the time has come to ensure that Africa receive a veterinary services of choice, which must include veterinary paraprofessionals delivering such a service, either through government service or by means of self-employment. This will ensure that upcoming farmers get the service they deserve at a cost-effective price. May we all enjoy this gathering and bear fruit from the outcome thereof. Thank you.